welcome to Ramsey Land. And we're back with our Aqua Terra columns. We're learning all about habitats and ecology today, and I'm here with Table One. Table One, I'm looking at your Aqua Terra column. It's amazing. Can you tell me what are all of the abiotic things in your Aqua Terra column? What's abiotic? The rocks and the plastic. The rocks and the plastic. So you're telling me these rocks and this plastic was never living. Is that correct? Yes. Fantastic. And now I'm with table two. Table two, can you guys tell me what are all the things in your aqua terra column that are biotic? The hornwort. The hornwort. That's awesome. Yeah, that's the plant that's in the water. That's called hornwort. What else is in the water that's biotic? Yeah, there's a little there's a little bed of Splenda in there. There's a little fish. Do you guys see a snail? Is there a snail in there? He might be along the bottom there. And okay, and is the snail biotic? Yes, because he's he's living, right? Yes, fantastic. Now we're to table three. Table three, we're learning about vertebrates and invertebrates from our aqua terra column. Can you guys tell me what's an example of a vertebrate? In your in your experiment, the fish. the fish is a vertebrate. Why is he a vertebrate? Because he has bones. He has bones. Fantastic! And now I'm over here with table four. I'm looking at your cool aqua terra column. Can you guys tell me what's an example of an invertebrate? The snail. There's a snail in there. Let's zoom in and find Mr. Mollusk. There's Mr. Mollusk. He doesn't have any bones, and so he's an invertebrate. You guys are brilliant, and now we're over here at table five. Table five, can you tell me, what is an animal adaptation that your fish has? The labyrinth organ. The labyrinth organ. So let me find your fish. Where is he? Right here. He doesn't want to. There he is. Can you tell me about this adaptation? What does that allow him to do? It allows him to gulp air from the surface. He can gulp air from the surface, so he does have gills. But in those swamps in Thailand, there's not enough oxygen. And so he's adapted a labyrinth organ that allows him to gulp air right off the surface. Fantastic. And then back here with table seven, look at this aqua terra column. It is fantastic. Can you guys tell me about producers and consumers? What are the producers in your aqua terra column? What are the producers? The plants and the trees make, make sugar. Okay, so plants and trees make sugar. We don't have any trees in this, but we the do have a hornwort. we do have a hornwort plant. And you guys are gonna plant something today. What are you gonna plant beans. today? Beans. Beans. Okay, so you guys take turns planting your beans, and beans are gonna become producers. And we know that producers make their own food. They make sugar. Can someone tell me how do plants make sugar? How do they do that? The sunlight. The sunlight. sunlight. And, and what else? Uh, CO2 and H2O. CO2 and H2O. And we call that process photo... Synthesis. Photosynthesis. Good. Now, did you plant your bean? Go ahead, Ava. Plant your bean. And pretty soon, these will grow and they will become producers. They'll make sugar from sunlight, CO2, and H2O. We call that photosynthesis. Awesome. I'm back here at table one. Can you guys plant your beans? We need more producers. There you go. Good job, Logan. There you go, Ryan. Good job. Madison, can you get a bean in there? <laughs> Fantastic. Sixth graders building models of their own ecosystems to identify producers, consumers, decomposers, abiotic and biotic organisms. They're learning about animal adaptations. Absolutely amazing. Way to go, guys.